All right. Welcome, 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 everybody, to another day of Read Rich and Righteous. We are reading Rich and Righteous, Spiritual Secrets of Mastering Money, Manifestation in Your Mind. I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, we've been here for almost two months going through this process, and it's been absolutely beautiful. Um, and I just want to actually today, I wanted to just celebrate some people. Um, uh, Diamond, uh, Diamond Mine 470, I see you all the time. Uh, 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 Sat Ra, I see you all the time. Um, Cesar, I see you all the time. Maddie, uh, Maddie and Prunes and, and Corey, uh, I see you all the time. Arielli, I see you all the time. Candice, I see you all the time. And I'm not always able to uh, look off from my peripheral vision and see who's there. And I know there's many others, but I just want to uh, celebrate consistency because that's what this work really requires. It, it requires consistency. And there's just some names that I just happen to see um, every single day. And uh, so I just wanted to give a shout out. I know there's more of you. Um, I'm not able to acknowledge everybody and I don't always see everybody, but those are just some names. Uh, Dr. Love B, Love you B, I see you all the time. Yes, so a uh, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, just for being here and for committing uh, to this ritual, right? To this ritual and doing this for yourself and for your own personal and spiritual growth and development. Uh, I honor you and um, and everybody who has been consistent in this process. We've been here at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, for almost two months and um, it's just really uh, beautiful to see. Akuya, all set. I see you all the time as well. Uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. All right. Uh, LeBaron, I see you. That's my MFM family, Maddie and LeBaron, MFM family. Um, so it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. I know some of you 538. I'm actually on the West Coast right now. So uh, yes, it's 530 for me as well. All right. Um, Got to show up. Right. And so East Coasters, all the West Coasters are putting y'all on notice. Yeah, y'all ain't got no excuse because they up at 530 every day, every day. All right. So um, shout outs. And this is just a beautiful, beautiful community. I am Sabrina Langston. I see you all the time as well. Um, I appreciate you. Um, so uh, we are pouring into ourselves. We're starting our day by pouring into ourselves and um, and filling up our own cup first before we go out into the world and start pouring into other people. And uh, we're making we're tuning our consciousness, right? We're tuning our consciousness to abundance. When we attune our consciousness to abundance, when we go out to the world, we see the world differently. We don't see scarcity. We don't see lack. We don't see hate. And not to say that they don't exist because we live in a world of dualism and polarity. It's not to say that those things don't exist. Okay, God is all. Okay, God is not just good, right? Now, God is not just good. God is all. So we can't just say God is good, right? But then also say God is all, right? There's no other entity outside of God, right? So religion has convinced you that there is this thing called the devil that is outside of God. Nothing is outside of God. So all of that is within us. And it's just we create based on where our consciousness is. Is our consciousness in a state of positivity or is it in a state of uh, negativity? And based on where our consciousness is, we start to create and attract those experiences. All right. So it is all God. There's nothing outside of God, family. So this idea of an entity outside of God that is working against God, if God be for me, who can be against me? Nothing, because God can't be against itself. We have the freedom to choose within this experience what we want to magnify and manifest. All right. And so um, we are choosing to manifest abundance. We are choosing to manifest love. We are choosing to manifest joy. And this is what we are doing by going through this process every single day. All right. So if you're just joining us, um, we are reading Rich and Righteous, Spiritual Secrets to Mastering Money, Manifestation and Your Mind. Um, and uh, we've been here for two months now. Um, I knew that the world was going to slip into a state of poverty, consciousness and scarcity uh, at the beginning of COVID. And that's when I got this divine download, uh, which is this one inch thick book. <laughs> it was actually two inches thick. I had to cut it down in half. Um, so there's more wisdom for me to share with you um, even after we get through this. And you see me go into that wisdom um, sometimes as we're reading <laughs> where I go on my tangents. Right. Um, those are things that did not get included in the book. Right. <laughs> um, those are bonus tracks. <laughs> Um, and then um, and then uh, I quit my job January 9th, 2009 at the bottom of the last recession. Right. And um, when I did that, what's going on, Justin, um, one of my closest friends in um, in Atlanta, uh, I um, quit my job at the bottom of the last recession. And it was this abundance mindset. It was this abundance mindset that freed me and gave me the faith to walk in my God given purpose, despite what the external economy was doing. 
I was focused on my personal economy, not the external economy, right? And so here we are in the midst of a quote unquote, another recession. And I just want to make sure that your personal economy is still one that is thriving and that you don't switch over into survival mode in this particular time. All right. And so uh, Spirit nudged me about two months ago and said, <clears throat> said, uh, um, read your book out loud. Okay. So I had sold thousands of copies of this book prior to that. Um, but I knew as an author, my goal is not just to get this book in your hands and for it to sit on your bookshelf somewhere, right? Like many of the self-help and personal development books you have. No, I wanted to get this book in your head and in your heart. And so if I was truly committed to that, it was not just about me selling the book and getting it to you. It was about me actually coming and creating a space where we could read the book together. Now, I, I, I created the audiobook. Audiobook took me three days, eight hours each day of recording. It was 24 hours of day after day recording just to get the audiobook out. And I did that because I wanted, for those of you who are truck drivers and things of that nature, I wanted you to have a way to still listen to the book, even if you couldn't sit down and read it. Some of our lives are so busy that we could not even read the book, right? And we haven't been reading for a long time. So Spirit nudged me and said, go read the book out loud. And out of obedience, what did I do? I'm here reading the book out loud. And, and I say this uh, to you all the time. When's the last time you had an author, a best-selling author, read their book out loud to you? day after day after day. That doesn't happen because all they care about is being on the New York Times bestseller. They don't care if the people even read the book. All they care about is being on some bestseller list. Well, I want to be on the most read list. I want to be on the most read list. How many books are on the most read list? Even the Bible is the best-selling book okay, of all time, but it's not the most read. It's not the most read. I want to be on the most read list. How many people actually got from uh, through my book from page one to the end? That's the list I want to be on because I know that that's the only way that this consciousness will actually enter into your mind. This sitting on your bookshelf, it will not enter in your mind. It'll be close to you. The vibration of this book may um, may help a little bit, but it will not penetrate you in the same way as hearing hearing it, right? Hearing it from me who heard it directly from source, okay? And so uh, this space has been inspiring. I, I It was just a divine download and it was a spiritual nudge that I adhered to. And um, here we are. And it's been a beautiful, beautiful space. That's how I know that this is in alignment. That's how I know that I'm in alignment, that this book is in alignment, and how all, and that all of you are in alignment um, by being here and showing up. So uh, we are going to uh, begin. One True, I, I see you all the time. I appreciate you for being here. I just did a, a quick celebration of some names that I saw in chat consistently. I know there's more of you. Um, you know, our community has grown to... Um, our community has grown to uh, over 600 people being here on a daily basis. Um, Dr. Ashanti, um, MFT, I see you all the time as well. Um, I recognize some people's icons and things of that nature. Deborah Knight, I see you uh, frequently as well. So I just wanted to give a shout out. And I know there's more of you. Again, um, I won't be able to acknowledge everybody, um, but I just wanted to celebrate uh, the folks that I see consistently and celebrate anybody who's showing up. Because you're not showing up for me, family. You are not showing up for me. You're showing up for yourself. You are showing up for yourself. Shout out to Jacqueline and, and Marvin Mitchell. Appreciate you both. Jacqueline blessed the stage at Generational Wealth Conference. Um, and uh, Marvin is a brother of mine who uh, we share this consciousness. If you've ever seen him on podcasts and things of that nature, you can tell we think the same. Uh, Rana Elise, I see you all the time. Uh, bless you for being here. I appreciate you as well. All right. So with that... <clears throat> With that, uh, let's get into our reading. Um, today's reading is, uh, we are on page 234. We're on page 234. Um, everybody just type consistency. Consistency. Because belief really is consistency. Belief manifests in your life as consistency, family. Belief is not just, oh, I believed it and um, I believe it in my head. No. Belief manifests in your life as consistency. If you truly believe something, you will do it consistently. If you believe in the love that you have, you will honor it and, and show it consistently. If you believe in the diet you have, you will partake in it consistently. If you believe in exercise, you will do it consistently. So belief manifests in your life as consistency. So every day you show up here, you are actually demonstrating that you believe in these principles. And what does scripture say? It is done unto you as you what? Is it, is it done unto you as your vision board shows? Is it done unto you as you pray? Is it done unto you as you uh, 
What does it say? It is done unto you as you what? As you believe. It is done unto you as you believe. Whatever you believe, strong enough and consistently enough and long enough, strong enough and long enough, whatever you believe, strong enough and long enough, guess what? That is what ends up manifesting in your life. That's what manifests in your life, all right? So, yes, I appreciate you, Deborah, um, for uh, reminding people to hit the like button. Okay, the only way for us to crack these algorithms uh, is for you to share it, to actually tap back into the human, which is stronger than the algorithm, and to share it. So um, on YouTube, we have uh, 291 people right now, 136 likes. So if you could please hit the like and share button. Same thing with Instagram. If you can hit that heart or whatever you see, um, or and the airplane, if you see the airplane on your end, please hit that so that we can get this consciousness for free out to other people. Okay, <clears throat> so. Um, we are on page 234, and this is a very important uh, chapter, um, and that is Math for Millionaires. And I just want to, um, I want to apologize. I want to apologize, family, for all of the BS math that you were put through in junior high school, high school, and even college that has no relevance to your life and your wealth whatsoever. I want to apologize because some of you were put down and actually feel ashamed of your relationship to numbers as a result of math that is irrelevant. Calculus shamed some of you. It made you feel less than. Oh, I mean, now I'm not a numbers person and I don't like math and things of that nature. So today I actually want to show you the math that you need to understand to become a millionaire. I want to show you the math that you need to become a millionaire. And literally, it does not go beyond sixth grade math. The math that you need to be a millionaire does not go beyond sixth grade math, family. It does not go beyond sixth grade math. And so that's what we're going to cover today. How many of you got shamed for math? Type me. If you got shamed or or you had a bad relationship to numbers because of some of the BS math that they tried to put you through in junior high school, high school, and even college, type me. If you felt shame for math and you you started to accept the identity that I'm not a, a numbers person. You started to accept the identity. I'm not a numbers person. You know, math is hard. How many of you went through that? Exactly. Exactly. I don't need you to know what a derivative is. Millionaires don't need to know derivatives. Okay. You don't need to know calculus. We need to know a little bit of algebra, maybe a little bit of algebra, but the math that you need to become a millionaire doesn't go beyond junior high school, family. Thank you, Tanya Malcolm. I appreciate you. All right. So let's get into it. <clears throat> Page 234. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some 60, some 30. Matthew 13, 23. So when Jesus is giving these parables on these metaphors about seed, what does seed represent, family? What does seed represent? I need you to make this connection. When Jesus only spoke in parables in the Bible, he said it's said in scripture that he only spoke in parables. So when we're talking about seed, what are we talking about? Seed is your thoughts, family. Seed is your thoughts, okay? So now if we have these thoughts, anytime you hear seed in the Gospels and it represents thoughts and we talk about good ground, what is the good ground? Seed is thought. Everybody put seed equals thought because I see a lot of different answers coming up right now. Put seed equals thought in chat, please. Seed equals thought. I need you to make that correlation for yourself. We need to anchor that because if, if you understand that especially with all the parables that represent farming and things of that nature, you will be able to start to decode the Bible. Stop reading the Bible literally. It is an allegorical book. If you want to, I think it's Galatians 4.24, it will let you know it is an allegorical book. Jesus said, I only speak in parables. It is an allegorical book, okay? So seed equals thought. So now what is ground equal? If we know that seed equals thought, right? It is a metaphor. It is a parable. It is a simile for thought. What is ground equal? Ground either equals the conscious or subconscious mind. Ground equals mind. Just for right now, put ground equals mind. Okay? 
Ground equals mind. Okay? So, but he that receiveth the seed, the thought, right? This book was a seed that God planted in me. It was a divine download that God planted in me. Okay? He that receiveth the thought into his good ground, into a mind that was fertile, meaning that my, my mind was ready to be impregnated. Not my stomach, not my womb. My mind was ready to be impregnated by God, right? So, but he that receiveth the thought into a good mind is he that heareth the word. I got this divine download. I heard God, right? The word is not just the Bible, okay? The word is not just the Bible, all right? And understandeth it. So I understood this divine download from God and from there, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some hundredfold, some 60, some 30, Matthew 13, 23. I hope that helps you understand this scripture at a deeper level, okay? So seed equals thought, ground equals mind, all right? So when you read some of the parables uh, in the Bible, that is, those are two keys to be um, able to unlock these parables, okay? So page 234. Adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and exponential growth are throughout the Bible. Every number in the Bible has significance. For instance, Numbers 2.9 reads, All the men assigned to the camp of Judah, according to their divisions, number 186,400. Listen to this, y'all. This is going to blow your mind. 186,400 just so happens to be the speed of light in miles per second. I'm going to read Numbers 2.9 again. And if you need to go verify this, open up your Bible right now. Numbers 2.9 reads, All the men assigned to the camp of Judah, according to their divisions, numbered 186,400. 186,400 just so happens to be the speed of light in miles per second. You think that's a coincidence, family? You think we're actually talking about people in the Bible? How is the speed of light in the Bible? I don't think so. Coincidence? I don't think so. This means that whoever wrote the Bible knew the speed of light long before old Christensen Romer supposedly calculated it in 1676 AD. The speed of light was not calculated until 1676 AD, y'all. Yet the exact number is in the Bible. Please make that make sense. There was a divine intelligence that created this book, a divine intelligence. It was likely not man. There was a divine intelligence. It may have come through a man or woman who was tapped in, a spiritual being who was tapped in. But how would the speed of light, the exact number, be in the Bible long before it was ever, ever Calculated and measured by man. Things that make you go, hmm, hmm. Make that make sense. The book of Numbers is estimated to have been written around 1428 BC, over 3,100 years earlier. The book of Numbers was supposedly written 3,100 years earlier than when all Christensen Romer supposedly calculated the speed of light in 1676 AD. What's even crazier is that the mile didn't, um, the mile didn't become a standard metric until 1592 AD. This speaks to the divine mathematical intelligence in the book, in these books called the Bible. Remember, the Bible is books. It's not a book. It is a collection of books, okay? And there are many books that were left out. <laughs> okay. There are many books that were left out. <laughs> All right. So math is the numerical science behind manifestation that creates a powerful marriage when coupled with spiritual science. There is an exact sacred geometry at work, and we want to learn how to use it to shape our reality. Two hydrogen atoms plus one oxygen atom will always yield steam water, or ice. We, have, we are to have life and have it more abundantly, quantitatively and qualitatively. So when we talk about abundance, we're not just talking about money, okay? We want to have abundance quantitatively, which can be measured in money, 
right? It also can be measured in your level of joy, your level of happiness, right? Your level of peace, right? But also qualitatively. While being rich, the mathematical, and righteous, the spiritual, is a fine line to walk, not only do I know it is possible, I know it is powerful. It is powerful for a rich and righteous being to walk the face of this earth. It is powerful for a rich and righteous being to walk the face of this earth. As I said before, we celebrated MLK Day um, uh, earlier this week, and um, I wish Martin Luther King was rich. I wish he was rich. If he was rich, he would have done more good in the world. He would have been, it would have been easier. And I think he got the Nobel Peace Prize, which I think was a million dollar reward. I'm not sure if he, uh, I'm not sure how he used that. But I would want the righteous, right? Just, just name someone. I, I know, I know you want to name yourself and you should name yourself, but name somebody in chat who you wish was richer. I wish Harriet Tubman was richer. I wish that she didn't have to go work the summers in a hotel, in the kitchen. I wish she could have been out there actually freeing more people without having to worry about money. Please name somebody you wish was richer. Somebody who you know is righteous, was a righteous in history, but may not have had a lot of money. Name somebody. I wish Malcolm X was richer. I wish Frederick Douglass was richer. He did own some property, right? I wish Rosa Parks was richer. Okay? Name somebody you wish was richer. Okay. I wish Minister Farrakhan was richer. I'm sure his balance is pretty strong, but I wish he was richer. I believe he would do more good. Okay. Fannie Lou Hamer, I wish she was richer. Marcus Garvey, I wish he was richer. Zora Neale Hurston, I wish she was richer. Fela Kuti, I wish he was richer. The Black Panthers, I wish they were richer. Nat Turner, I wish he was richer. Are you understanding this? We are here to... Megger Evers, I wish he was richer. Booker T. Washington, I wish he was richer. W.E. Du Bois, I wish he was richer. Ida B. Wells, I wish she was richer. Maya Angelou, I wish she was richer. Nipsey Hussle, I wish she was richer. Fred Hampton, I wish he was richer. Dr. Sabi, I wish he was richer. Tupac, I wish he was richer. Mandel Nelson Mandela, I wish he was richer. Octavia Butler, I wish she was richer. Are you understanding this? We have to release the idea. We have to release the idea that those who are doing the most righteous work should not have abundance. We actually want them to have abundance so that they can do more good work. Right? So we honor all the ancestors and all the names that you put. We honor them. Bobby Seal, I wish he was richer. Huey Newton, I wish he was richer. Okay? We honor... Many of them ancestors, some still being alive, I wish they were richer. We have to release this false connection that you can't be righteous and rich at the same time. No, it is a very powerful way to live on this earth when we are able to have both. Okay? Page 235. God is a God of order. There is an order of operation to life. In school, you were taught that the order of operations for math was PEMDAS. P-E-M-D-A-S, parentheses, exponent, multiply, divide, add, and then subtract. If you came across a complex equation and you did, did the operations out of order, you would end up with the wrong answer. The good news is that even if you failed calculus, math for millionaires only requires up to a junior high school education in math. There is a formula and order of operation for building wealth too. When it comes to math for millionaires, the order of operations is S dame. That's subtract, divide, add, multiply, exponent. Everybody type S dame. S D A M E. Everybody type S dame. S D A M E. Not PEMDAS. That's what you were taught in school. S dame. S dame. Everybody type that. S dame. This is the new order of operation. I'm going to walk you through it in just a second. Okay? S dame. All right. Y'all ready? I will walk you through each step. From there, you can determine what stage you are in and act accordingly. Okay. So here is the imagery for S Dame. Okay. Subtract, divide, add, multiply, exponent. Okay. I'm going to walk you through this. I'm going to walk you through this right now. So subtract. 
Take nothing for the road, no staff, no travel bag, no bread, no money, and don't take an extra shirt. Luke 9, 3. <clears throat> Subtraction means reducing your expenses by downsizing and releasing things that weigh you down instead of lift you up. I never want you to shrink, however. God keeps growing, multiplying, and expanding. How do you know? Because the universe does so. However, like a bow and arrow, sometimes you have to go backwards to go forwards. This stage is more about pruning any extra expenses from your life that are not serving you. You may cut back on lifestyle expenses such as eating out, buying coffee, trips, and even downsizing where you live to reduce your housing expense. So that is the first step in the equation. It is to subtract. Some of you have clothes in your closet that you have not wore for a long time. Still have tags on them, return them. Clothes, shoes. Some of you have things in storage that you haven't even touched in a year. Release them. Release them. <laughs> you have extra things that you don't need. The purpose of pruning is to cut back. <laughs> I'm calling some people out, huh? Calling some people out. Uh-oh, he talking to me. He talking to me. Some of you have some, some subscriptions that you have. $10 a month, $20 a month. It's going out. You don't even use the service anymore. Okay? How many of y'all guilty? <laughs> How many of y'all guilty? Okay? The first step is to subtract. To subtract. Subtracting creates emptiness. It creates space for God to pour into. But if you are so filled up because you are a hoarder, there is no nook in your life available for God to enter into, then guess what? You're going to stay where you are. So the first step in this equation is to subtract and release. All right? Okay? So clothing, storage units, subscriptions, people, uh-oh, uh-oh. People, how many of you need to release some people? How many of you need to release some people? You've been holding on to them because they are blood family, right? You've been holding on to them because they're blood family. You've been holding on to them because of nostalgia. We've been friends for 10, 20 years. Guess what? Some of y'all need to release some people. You need to subtract some people from your life. Okay? That's the first step in the equation, family. It's subtraction. We subtract before we add. We subtract before we add, family. Yeah, some of you have to cut off family members who always doubt you, always coming with negativity, always pumping fear into you, didn't protect you when you were little. And I know you think that that is um, uh, unconditional love. You can go see them, but you have to have boundaries. Uh, when you go see them, I want you to put a timer on your cell phone. I'm going to be in here for 30 minutes and then I'm out. I'm in here for 30 minutes and then I'm out. And you, do, you literally put a timer and be like, oh, what's that alarm? Oh, oh it's just, I, I just got to go. I got to be somewhere. You just need to put a timer on. A phone call, you get a phone call from that negative person. Yeah, it's okay. You don't have to ignore. Yeah, you can't ignore. I encourage you to ignore the call. But if you do answer the call and they just jump into negativity, right, as if you were their therapist, just go ahead, put a 10-minute timer on, and once the timer's done, then the call is done. Oh, please don't do that to your husband. <laughs> so you try to cut off your husband? <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> All right. Y'all with me? Start some timers. All right. Delete some numbers. Block some people. All right. Second step is the divide. So they did eat and were filled and they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets. Mark 8.8. 8. When Jesus divided the loaves, it actually multiplied them. If I break a loaf of bread from one into two, I divided it. But do you realize that division is actually the same as multiplication? Now, the two pieces of bread may be smaller than the original priest piece, but dividing oftentimes means it, it, the vision that we give is that it's breaking something up, and it is, but it is actually also multiplication, okay? 
So when Jesus divided the loaves, it actually multiplied them. Dividing something in half gives you two. Division is a form of multiplication. Whew. Division is a form of multiplication. Through weekly and monthly budgeting, you divide the money that comes in and track your true profit and your net worth. As a business, we know in advance what is coming in, we budgeted for what is going out, and we know exactly how much should be in the account at the end of the month. This ensures that there is no waste or frivolous spending. Again, the goal is not for you to feel constrained by a budget. However, freedom requires some discipline. Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon.com said, I think frugality drives innovation, just like other constraints do. One of the only ways to get out of a tight box is to invent your way out. Budgeting from a mentality of stewardship as opposed to scarcity is key. A scarcity mindset will magnify how little you have. A stewardship mindset will magnify how much you were able to do with what you had. So when we're budgeting, we don't want to budget from the energy of scarcity, right? We want to budget and divide our monies that are coming in so that we can multiply, okay? We want to divide our money so that we can multiply it. Is that clear? So that we can multiply. So a lot of times when you're in the energy of scarcity and budgeting, oh, I have so little and I need to budget it. And then now I'm coupon cutting and things of that nature. That is not the place we want to budget from. We want to budget from a place of stewardship. Do you understand? Do you understand the difference between budgeting from a place of scarcity and budgeting from a place of stewardship? Say everybody type stewardship versus scarcity. Type stewardship versus scarcity. We want to budget from a place of stewardship. I want to be a good steward of that which was given to me so that I can multiply it. Okay? So that I can multiply it. It's a subtle mindset shift, but it is key. Because if you get into the Dave Ramsey type of budgeting, you will, you will re actually be programming scarcity into your being. If you get into the Dave Ramsey kind of budgeting based in scarcity, you will be programming scarcity into your being and you will, we won't understand why it's so hard to multiply because you're focused on how little you have instead of knowing that you're budgeting so that you can multiply that what you have. Okay. I hope you're seeing these subtle distinctions. These are subtle but powerful distinctions. All right. We're on page 237 now. Now that we've subtracted, now that we've properly divided that which we have, now we want to go into the adding phase. All these things shall be added unto you, Matthew 6, 33. So I'm showing you where math is in the Bible. Addition is adding revenues by increasing your value or creating new revenue streams that we discussed in the cash flow framework. Earning revenue beyond a job forces you to think creatively about who you are, what you have, and the value you can add to the world. You can look for short-term opportunities that lead to quick cash or long-term ones that could lead to long money. These are the types of questions you ask in the addition stage. Are my skills more valuable somewhere else? Can I work overtime or get a second part-time job? How can I make an extra three sales per week or per day? What could be a good side hustle for me? Are there gigs in the gig economy that I could easily start, like Uber? Can I monetize an asset that I already have, like renting my extra room through Airbnb? Are, are there divided dividend-paying stocks I can buy? There is likely some low-hanging fruit that you have been overlooking that can add to your abundance. Look for underutilized assets around you or ways to turn your capital into currency, okay? So that is the adding phase. That is the adding phase, right? Now we want to go into multiplication. Be fruitful and multiply. Are you seeing math in the Bible, y'all? <laughs> Are you seeing all these math words in the Bible? Be fruitful and multiply. Genesis 1, 28. Multiplication means investing in assets that grow according to value, not time. We never want to tie our wealth to our body or time unless we have a high value skill like a professional athlete. We want to invest 
in something that can multiply itself without multiplying our workload, okay? So some of you have high value skills, but because you're trading time for money, you actually subconsciously self-sabotage because you know if I promote myself more, if I promote my business more, all it's going to mean is more work for me because I don't have systems, I don't have people in place that allow me to scale that without adding more time as well. And even athletes want this because they know their body's ability to perform at a professional level will only last for a limited time. You can multiply money through things like growth stocks, multifamily real estate, or businesses, or a business with systems and processes like a franchise you buy. Okay. If I buy into a franchise, that is a the franchise is a brand and a series of processes that I can implement not only once, but twice, three times, four times, etc. So now you are a, a franchise owner of a Chick-fil-A and you have five, five places. You have five Chick-fil-A's. Why? Because that brand and that process is replicable and it does not require more time from you. It requires the initial setup from you and you hiring the right manager and team members, et cetera, and taking your expertise from your first one into your second, third, fourth, and fifth. Okay? So this is why franchises is powerful. Next and finally is exponential. But he shall receive a hundredfold now this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands. Mark 10, 30. This is the true abundance. Notice there's no money there. A hundredfold now in this time, houses, real estate, in community, brethren and sisters, family, mother and children, and lands. Exponential means investing in potentially high yielding assets or businesses. This business could be your own business based on a scalable product or service you've developed. Okay. My best investment is not an asset outside of myself. My best investment is now my business. So when I get this hundred dollars from you buying the book, guess where it goes? It goes back into my business. Why? So I can grow it so that I can reach more people so that I can impact more lives. This is not just go into my pocket so that I can go on vacation. Okay. That is not where this goes. It goes back into creating more good and doing more God on this earth. Okay. There's no stock out there at this moment in time that can return more to me than reinvesting in myself as the leader of this business, right? And into the business itself. Okay. Something that started in your bedroom or basement can become a billion dollar company over time. If you haven't found a business to build, you can achieve exponential growth by investing in startups at an early stage prior to them IPOing. If you are not the CEO or an early stage employee, getting access to these deals as an investor requires a network and net worth to attract them. These deals can be riskier, but they can also be highly rewarding. Great investors do their due diligence on any transaction. Never invest in something you don't fully understand. Many of you got burned by cryptocurrency. You still can't explain what cryptocurrency is. But because everybody else was doing it, you decided to do it. And now you're down. Now you're down. So I'm going to repeat that. Never invest in something you don't fully understand. Stop investing in things just because you see a whole bunch of other people doing it. Don't do that, please. Do not do that. I want you to understand the asset class and master the asset class that you are investing in. Exponential growth can also come from other investment vehicles like real estate, using the BRRRR strategy, which is buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat, stock options, cryptocurrencies, when you understand it, Forex trading, ETFs, exchange trade funds, and NFTs, non-fungible tokens, and more. Choose a lane and seek mastery if you want massive returns and don't expect to get more out, of, uh, out than you put in in terms of time, money, and mastery, okay? So in order to get massive returns, you need to seek mastery. In order to get master ret uh, uh, massive returns, seek mastery. So I need everybody to say mastery equals massive returns. Mastery equals massive returns. Mastery equals massive returns. Mastery equals massive returns. So now if you will wonder why you haven't got massive returns in your life, we have to go to the beginning of the equation. What have you mastered? What have you mastered, family? If you can't tell me 
anything that you've mastered, then that is part of the reason why you have not seen massive returns in your life. So my focus would be, how do I master something? What do I want to master? And how? And this is where I tell you, if you want to manifest something, before you even start, ask yourself, am I committed to this for at least 10 years? We heard Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, the 10,000 hour rule. 10,000 hour rule is what? 50 weeks a year. Yes, 10,000 hour rule is 50 weeks a year, 20 hours a week at least, practicing and developing that skill set for 10 years. 50 weeks a year, 20 hours a week for 10 years is mastery. How long have I been in the real estate industry family? May 2013. I'm in my ninth year. I'm headed into my 10th year of real estate. And what are you seeing in terms of the multifamily movement? You are seeing massive returns, not just for me, but for my students. Because I've been committed and the returns started happening around year seven and eight. The greatest return started happening year seven and eight of me having my head down saying this is the asset class that I am seeking to master. And then once you become a master for yourself, you can now take that mastery and share it with other people. This is how it unfolded for me. I bought my first property May of 2013. Today is January of 2022. I'm in my ninth year. What have you committed to for that long, family? You become jack of all trades, master of none. You become a jack of all trades and a master of none. This is why you aren't seeing the returns that you desire. Okay? So, S. Dame is a cyclical process. You can do this with $1,000 to your name or $1 million to your name. When you seek to be the best steward of money as you can, you always want to find ways to use it more efficiently and expand it. Whereas someone with only $1,000 to their name may be subtracting a monthly subscription service like an unnecessary cable bill, someone with $1 million may be subtracting an unprofitable line of business. Where someone with only $1,000 to their name may be adding a part-time job, someone with $1 million may be adding a new 10-unit apartment complex to their portfolio. Know where you are and grow from there without feeling the need to compare, okay? So we subtract first, okay? We get rid of anything that is unnecessary, that is no longer serving us. Then we divide, meaning that we budget from a place of stewardship, not scarcity. Then we seek to add new revenue streams into our lives. Then we seek to multiply that which we have through investing. Then we seek exponential growth primarily through our own businesses and our own selves. Um, and in other cases, if you have excess capital, you can invest in startups that have the potential. Okay. So that is the new order of operations that we want to use as we build our wealth. It is a different approach. Again, I apologize to all of your junior high school, high school, and even college teachers that made you feel bad about math. We have to understand some basic math, but the only math that we have to understand to create true wealth is up to junior high school family, up to junior high school. One day I'm gonna break down all the equations that I use to create wealth, like cash on cash return, right? Understanding your net worth, et cetera. There are some key equations. There's about, there's about 15 to 20 key equations that you need to know to create wealth. None of them include calculus, zero. A lot of them are simply algebra, multiplication and division, right? And so this is our focus. Forgive yourself and forgive your teacher for, for making you feel bad about math and your ability to work with numbers. Know that you didn't need it all anyways. We didn't need calculus. We didn't need to know how to do derivatives. We didn't need any of that in order to become a millionaire. And so this is what we're focused on. We're focused on what we need. So we released that. I don't care if you got a C in calculus. I don't care if you failed math. It doesn't matter. You can still become a millionaire when you understand math for millionaires in the way that we just broke it down. All right? Deep breath. So that concludes our reading for today. Um, 
Uh, we are in the chapter on money commandment number seven, which is how the rich and righteous use money. Um, I'm excited about the next chapter um, because uh, um, I'm going to be breaking down your blessing and business model, your blessing and business model. This is how you get paid to walk in your God given purpose every single day. So um, we will be on page 240 on Monday in God I trust and in me God trust. Okay, so we'll be on page 240 on Monday. Um, I want everybody to have a great, great weekend or strong in. Okay, we don't want to end the week weak. Okay, we want to have a strong two days um, off if you are limited by the 40 hour work week. Um, and uh, yeah, I just celebrate you all for just being here. Patricia Price, I see you all the time. Thank you for being here. Um, yes, yes, yes. Let me see some more familiar. Soaring Butterfly, I see you frequently. Remember, consistency, consistency, consistency. Consistency is the outward manifestation of belief. When you believe something, you do it consistently. So um, just shout out to everybody who's been consistent and I'll just continue to show up. You're not showing up for me. You're showing up for yourself. You're not showing up for me. You're showing up for yourself. All right. So I just want to send love out to all of you. Um, I, I pray that um, the time that you have uh, this um, in the next two days is good to you. And I will see you all on um, Monday. How'd the conference go? Generational Wealth Conference was lit. We had 1,500 people there. There's a, there's a video on my Instagram. We had 1,500 people there. Generational Wealth Conference was lit. Please do not miss it next year. <laughs> All right. So um, we have a Facebook group now. Um, and the face because that's what you're requesting. Um, and so the Facebook group is facebook.com forward slash rich and righteous. It is facebook.com forward slash rich and righteous. So if you're on YouTube, open up an another tab and click, click that link. Open up a new tab. That's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash rich and righteous. And then um, for those of you on Instagram, when you go to, I know you can't click away while watching the live. When you go to Facebook, just go to any group that you're in, then delete the number that's on the end or the name that's on the end and just put rich and righteous. And uh, you can request access to that group. In fact, let me go over there and uh, actually I'll give you all about five minutes and I'll go over there and I will uh, admit people to the group um, in about five minutes after the live. Okay. All right. So, uh, Kiyama, good to see you, fam. Kiyama is a sister. We go way back. Our Brooklyn days. All right. Oh, yeah. 100 dope men and 100 dope women. Um, how many of you, how many of you, where are my single folks at? Where are my single folks at? All my single folks, I encourage you to go to 100dopemen.com or 100dopewomen.com if you're trying to meet somebody who is also on this wavelength and on this level of consciousness. Um, yeah, if you're trying to get out these streets and you're trying to uh, date, change the way you date, <laughs> uh, we are guiding people through a process to do that. Actually, uh, my sister Sakura Anuket and my brother Chris Kaziro will be leading uh, that process. It'll be a six month program to uh, one, help you heal from your past trauma, whether that is dating trauma or childhood trauma, then two, to generate self love, and then the three, uh, put you through a process to help you find love that lasts. And it was like you won't be in the club, all right? Um, and we're going to teach you how to attract that. Uh, we need um, families rule the world, not rich individuals. And so um, even though I'm here to help you become rich and righteous, um, uh, we have to, it's families. We have to create families. Uh, obviously, the black family has been destroyed, uh, going all the way back to the Willie Lynch letter, um, and then it's been intentional. And so we need to rebuild that. And, you know, um, we're just focused on a small group of people right now who desire uh, desire to um, do it the right way. If your negative patterns in relationships keep showing up, you keep dating the same person in a different body, um, it's time to do something different, family. And uh, we think we have a process. Um Ra is a healer and Kazi is a matchmaker. So with her divine feminine and his divine masculine, um, creating that process and guiding you all through that process, um, you're going to end up in a, the healthiest relationship of your life. You will likely end up in the healthiest relationship of your life once you go through this process and you, and, and you date according to these um, guidelines that have been laid out. So um, please go to a hundred dope. I know I don't even need to say, please, this is not begging. We don't need you to. It's if you need 
this in your life. Um, so go to 100dopemen.com or 100dopewomen.com. Again, that's 100dopemen.com or 100dopewomen.com. Fill out that survey. Um, this program is likely going to kick off in February. And so uh, stay tuned for that. Fill out the form and uh, you'll get notified when um, enrollment for that program is open. All right. So again, that's 100dopemen.com or 100dopewomen.com. All right. Yes, it will be virtual. We we actually wanted to do groups in um, Los Angeles and Atlanta in person. Um, we believe that that would be powerful, but we're getting applications from all over the world, honestly. We're getting applications from all over the world. So uh, we realize in order to reach all the people who need it, um, we're going to have to um, we're going to have to do it virtually. Um, and hopefully we have enough people aggregate in certain cities where they can do things in the curriculum together. But uh, we're, we're going to do it virtually um, so we can get that one person that's in Colorado <laughs> and that one person that's in Wyoming and that one person that's in Canada. <laughs> right. Um, so it will be virtual. And I think it would be equally powerful. Um, and to the extent that we can grow that community of of singles who are actually seeking, um, seeking, you know, everybody's not seeking marriage, family. Everybody's not seeking marriage. And we need to be able to weed out those people really quickly. Right. Um, so, uh, but there are people who are ready. And so this is a relationship readiness program. It's a relationship readiness program. All right. And, uh, yes, uh, Satra, um, Anuket, she is in, um, she is on Instagram live. So, uh, you can click, uh, her name and follow her. Um, and any questions you have, you can send them to her via DM. All right. Um, you should see her there. I can't pin her right now. Um, it's S A T R A H hyphen underscore. A N U K E T. So, any questions about that? Um, fill out the form first at 100 Dope Men or 100 Dope Women.com. And any questions about the program, uh, feel free to DM her. Okay. Kazi, I don't, I didn't see Kazi today. So, Kazi, um, fellas, um, you can, you can uh, DM Ra for right now. Uh, but when Kazi's here, um, I'll have you DM Kazi. All right. Everybody, good. All right. Enjoy your two days. I'll see you here. Please set a phone alarm for uh, Monday, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be back on the East Coast, so I will get my extra three hours of sleep <laughs> and be here with y'all. All right. Much love, y'all. Oh, if you do not have the book, if you do not have the book and you would like the book, um, go to moneyandmanifestation.com. Again, that's moneyandmanifestation.com. For $100, uh, you get five copies of the book. One is for you. Four uh, four is um, for you to give away to other people. You also get the rituals workbook, which is all the exercises that I do to anchor these principles in. Um, in. And then uh, you also get the audio book. All right. So if you would like a copy of the book, a physical copy of the book so that you can see some of the charts and the diagrams and things of that nature that don't always translate as I read to you out loud, um, you can go get that at moneyandmanifestation.com. If you go to Amazon, please do not go to amazon.com, family. On Amazon, you will only get one copy for $100. On Amazon, the book is $100, okay? It is $100. Please go to moneyandmanifestation.com to get five copies plus the Rituals Workbook plus the audiobook, all right? Cool. Somebody said, um, how do I get the audiobook? If you bought the book set and you did not get the audiobook, please email support at thefreedomschool.com. Again, that is support at thefreedomschool.com. My team will get you access. Bless Energy, I see you, family. It was so great to meet you. Bless Energy is here, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, every single day. I see you, fam. All right? Cool. I'll see everybody later. Again, um, the book, moneyandmanifestation.com, moneyandmanifestation.com. If you are in a state of lack currently, a temporary state of lack currently, in oh, in the Facebook group, family, if you have books to give, please post in the Facebook group, and I will pin your post. If you have books to give, you received your books and you are looking to give them to people and you don't have enough people around you in your actual environment, please post in the Facebook group, right? And I will pin your post. And those of you who need a book, then comment or message that person via Facebook to have them ship you one, all right? Okay, beautiful. And then um, 100dopemen.com or 100dopewomen.com, please go there uh, to sign up for that program that's going to launch either February or March. And if you have any questions um, uh, on Instagram, you saw Satra Anuket, you can DM her if you have any questions, especially the ladies. 
brothers, I want you to message Chris Kazi Roll, but he's not here today. Um, so uh, DM uh, Ra if you have any questions, and uh, she will put you in contact with uh, Kazi. All right. All right, y'all. Love y'all. See you on Monday. Peace.